expected results. Okay, we're continuing to follow the latest developments. After Johnson & Johnson announced just hours ago that its COVID booster shot is 94% effective in the U.S. if received two months after the first dose. The company also said it increases antibody levels four to six times higher than one shot alone. Meanwhile, the race to get kids vaccinated, that continues. So we want to get an update also on that because Pfizer announced yesterday that their COVID-19 vaccine works for children ages 5 to 11. And it will now seek emergency use approval by the FDA. So we have a lot to discuss here when it comes to vaccines. So joining us is Dr. Paul Offit, director of the Vaccine Education Center and also an attending physician in the Division of Infectious Diseases at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And you also sit on the FDA advisory committee that will be reviewing all of the data. So you are quite a busy man this, during this time, and we're grateful that you're taking some time to talk to us. Good morning to you. Good morning. So first, let's talk about this Johnson & Johnson news. It just came out just a few hours ago. What are your thoughts on the fact that they're saying if you take that they have a booster now and then if you take it within two months, um, that it will be good for you? And then also, if you take it six months later, it's going to be even better. Right. Well, again, we're sort of in an era of science by press release. I mean, I know as much as you do, having read, you know, their couple page press release. I think what has to happen now is they'll submit these data to the uh, to the FDA for emergency use authorization approval. And then we'll get to look at all the data, all the especially all the safety data on every patient that received this and make sure that there's a consistent, you know, protection across all age groups, across all ethnic or racial backgrounds, that there's not any safety issues. So, again, it looks very, very, uh, opti very promising. But again, we need to look at those data before those recommendations are going to come out. And I thought it was interesting because Johnson & Johnson prided itself, you're talking about press releases, on the fact that it was a one-dose <laughs> shot. But now they're saying, well, you might need to take another one within two months, when compared to the others, you took two in one month. Yeah, you know, it's I think what happened with this booster dose discussion, I think when President Biden, you know, stepped up to the podium and said, you know, uh, uh, the general population is all going to be getting a vaccine, uh, the uh, a third dose of mRNA vaccines, you know, roughly eight months, he said initially, then six months um, after that second dose, he, he said, I think what, what was created was this notion that two doses of mRNA vaccine was not enough, or the one dose of Johnson & Johnson vaccine was not enough. In fact, both of those mm. strategies work very well at preventing serious disease including Delta, including all age groups, including up to the present time. So although I think a booster dose will, will further help um, protect against asymptomatic infection or mildly symptomatic infection, to date, all the evidence is that protection against severe disease is holding up with what you've gotten so far. So don't feel like you've been under-vaccinated if you've only gotten two doses of the mRNA vaccine or one dose of Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I'm glad that you are bringing that up because some people felt like, okay, at first the president was saying everyone is going to be able to get or should get this booster. Now it's like only certain age groups. So some people were concerned. Right. That, that's what came. That's what our, our committee discussed last Friday. And, and you know, the, the statement that was made was that look in Israel. If you look in Israel, there's starting to be an erosion in protection against serious disease in people over 60. But that hasn't been seen in this country. There are five studies that have been done in this country that have shown continued protection against serious disease. Again, all age groups, all vaccines um, and against the Delta variant. So what was experienced in Israel is not being experienced here. And that's why we were much more um, uh, 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 unwilling to sort of uh, release these vaccines as in the mRNA case, so as a three-dose vaccine for the general public, but rather narrowed it to people who are most likely to benefit initially. Okay, so let's talk about then the vaccine for kids. Pfizer came out with their big news saying that they're going to push it to you guys to look at and see if it's going to get FDA approval for kids ages 5 through 11. What is the difference then with this vaccine for kids versus what all the other adults, um, what adults have been taking? Right. So adults get for the Pfizer vaccine, 30 microgram dose, two doses separated by three weeks for children between five and 11 years of age. It's not 30 micrograms. It's 10 micrograms. So it's a third of the dose, but at the same dosing interval um, for children less than than five years of age, the six month old to, to five year old. It's even less than that. It's three micrograms. We don't have those data yet. And again, the FDA will hopefully be reviewing these data and we can have a recommendation by mid October for children between five and 11 years of age. And certainly we need a 
the vaccine for children. They're in school now. They're all together in one place. Uh, they're, th those less than 12 are completely susceptible to this virus. The Delta variant is, 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 uh, is highly transmissible. As we head to winter, this virus is even going to be more transmissible. So we need a vaccine for children. But remember, um, having it isn't the same thing as giving it. You know, we do have a vaccine for the 12 to, to 15 year old, but only 40 percent of children uh, get that vaccine. So it doesn't work if you don't give it. Oh, that's a very good point. So if parents are considering and they're taking in this information now that we know it could be available, like you mentioned, by the end of the year for kids ages 5 to 11, what if they say, well, I want to wait for there's more options? Or do you think they should just jump on it? If Pfizer makes this available, Pfizer is the route you're going to take if you're interested in getting your kids vaccinated. Yeah, I don't know what other options you have. I mean, you can have stay at home, homeschool. You can mask and physical distance as much as possible. But, you know, it, it's always true that you're making at some level decisions under uncertainty. I mean, with, for example, the 12 to 15 year old study it was a 2300 child study. Half got the vaccine, half didn't. Um, there were 18 cases of COVID in that study, all in the placebo group. Now, you could say, you know what, I want to wait for more children to be vaccinated before I, I jump in. I want to test the water with one foot, if you will. But, you know, you could have done a 23,000 thousand child study in that case, a bigger study. In case that case, there wouldn't have been 18 cases of COVID. There would have been 180 cases of COVID, presumably most, if not all, in the placebo group. So a choice to wait is, is, is not a risk-free choice. It's just a choice to take a different risk, and I would argue more serious risk, if the, if the data that show that this vaccine, at least in thousands of children, is, uh, is safe and effective. But you're right, thousands of children isn't millions of children. The, the father of modern vaccines, a man named Maurice Hillman, who created nine of the 14 vaccines that we give to children, said it best. He said, I never breathe a sigh of relief until the first three million doses are out there. But in terms of the mRNA vaccines, you have hundreds of millions of doses out there. So I think we have a pretty big safety platform on which to stand. And really quickly, because we are out of time, but I want to bring this up because this is also the thing I hear from parents the most. What about the long-term effects? It's one thing for adults to be worried about it. What about my children as they're growing, their bodies are changing? What do we know about that? Well, so we have 200 years of history of giving vaccines to children, and certainly vaccines can cause serious and, and permanent side effects and sometimes fatal side effects. But when those happen, it all occurs within six weeks of a dose. There is not an example of a serious side effect that has not occurred within six weeks of a dose. There's not this sort of let's see what happens five or 10 or 15 years later regarding vaccines. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. And thank you, Dr. Offit. You're going to be very busy reviewing all that data. So we'll see what you and the FDA as a whole decides. Thank you so much. Thank you.